Google Drive is a pretty amazing free tool from our friends at Google with word processor, spreadsheet, presentation software, and so much more. Today, five things you need to know to get more out of Google Drive on Dottotech. Steve Dotto here, how the heck are you doing this fine day? At Dottotech, we make technology easy so you can do more. Today, we're gonna to take a look at Google Drive. We've been looking at the spreadsheet and the word processor and the presentation package in Google Drive over our past few videos. But today, I wanna to talk about some global things that you can do with Google Drive that make it that much more effective. And we're gonna begin with this, the ability to use Google Drive offline. One of the biggest challenges with using a tool like Google Drive is for the most part, you need to be connected to the internet to use it. It is a cloud-based service. So if you're, say, sitting on an airplane and you don't want to pay outrageous prices for terrible Wi-Fi, you are out of luck as far as editing your presentation or a document that you want to work on. That is, unless you know about using Google Drive offline. Allow me to show you. If you go to uh, the Google, the Chrome Web Store, and you search for Google Docs offline, we will put a link in the description as low. You add this extension to Chrome and you can use Google Docs offline. Now it's a small process that you have to go through. You have to install this. It only works in Chrome. It doesn't work in any of the other non-Google web browsers. Now, once you've installed Google Docs offline, you wanna go into the Google Docs settings. You, you, there's no point in looking for this particular extension in your normal place where you, you run and manage your browser extensions because it doesn't work that way. Instead, it's very specific just for Google Drive. So instead, go to My Drive, go into your Google Drive account. And there, if you go under the gear settings in the top right-hand side, you can go into the settings. And here you set global settings for Google Drive. And there is the ability to sync Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides, and Drawing Files to this computer so that you can edit offline. Now, a few caveats. One they mentioned here right away is don't set this up on a public computer because then all of your documents will be left behind on the computer. But what's gonna happen now is from the cloud services that Google has is they're gonna sync all of these documents to your local computer. So the caveat is you have to make sure you have enough space to store all of the documents. Now you can very quickly determine how much space you need because just scrolling up a little bit, you see that I've got 7.7 .7 gigabytes of storage being used by Google Docs at this particular time. So that's how much space I need to have if I choose to sync this. And then what will happen is when you're traveling on a plane and you want to edit a document, you go into Google Drive and your browser just as normal and all of your documents will be there. Any changes that you make will be later synced once you go back online. This is a great productivity asset. Google Drive offline editing. I like that. The next thing I would like to talk to you about is I discovered this one uh, by complete accident when uh, one of my daughters was working on a document and she thought she'd erased her entire document and there were tears aplenty because she hadn't backed up, or so she thought, she hadn't backed up the Google Doc that she was working on. It was for a school project. But did you know that we have revision management right within Google Docs? And it's very sophisticated and very powerful. If I go under the file menu, there we have something called version history. Let me open that up. And when we go see version history, we see all of the different times or all of the versions of this document that have been saved going back as long as this document is existing. So if you accidentally delete something or you make a revision and then you decide you want to go back, you can scroll back in history and see previous versions of this document uh, when it was created and when it was last when, when it was last edited. And this is something that I just discovered. I think it is so cool. Click on the little dots on the side and you can name the versions of the document. So here you've got some great version history and some great organizational options if you want to save previous versions or previous iterations of any documents that you're working on. And if you choose any of those that you want to then start working with again and you want to revert your document back to that original uh, that original state, you just click restore this version and then it changes the current document that you're editing back to that original version. Now, I don't know about you, but I tend to make the same mistake 
over and over again. I'm not, not in life, although I might well be doing that. Uh, but when I'm typing, I have, you know, I've kind of become a typist that happens to hit the same key sequence on a regular basis and make the same mistakes over and over again. Occasionally I make the same spelling mistakes over and over again as well. Uh, but in the tools menu, you've got automatic substitution, which is a really useful little feature built in to Google Drive. Here's how it works, is if you happen to make the same mistake, like I do, I always type in T-E-H instead of the. If you do that on a consistent basis, you can set up these automatic replacements. So it will automatically switch and, and automatically replace it when you make a mistake with the corrected version. So if I'm typing away here and I've, I say, I am T-E-H. Do you see, I typed in T-E-H, but it didn't come in T-E-H. I'll try it again, T-E-H. Watch when I hit the H. It changes it to the, the, the. It changes it. So when you, if you make consistent mistakes, either in spelling where you invert some letters, you have that kind of an issue as you're writing, or like me, as I'm typing away like mad, I constantly, for example, hit the semicolon instead of the apostrophe for, uh, for contractions, automatic substitutions, and they will fix it for me. Two more things to talk about. The first is I want to talk to you about publishing any documents that you're working on to the web. Now, this is something that's going to take a little bit of getting your head around, but because Google Docs are a cloud-based service, every single document we, we create actually has a web address attached to it. We can take advantage of the fact that we have this web address and we can publish that address publicly and allow people to see the living document as opposed to a static document. Allow me to explain that in a little more detail. If I create a, uh, some instructions for something and I want to send that to somebody, I can save it as a PDF document and email it to them as an attachment, or I can copy and paste it into an email. And in either one of those cases, they get the information that I'm trying to convey to them, but they get a static version of that document. What happens if things change occasionally? We want to modify exactly what we're saying, or it's, a, it's an FAQ where, where things are changing on the kind of on the fly, and we want to give them access to a dynamic document. Well, in that case, for the most part, we would say, oh, we better publish this to the web. We better publish a web page that we can edit, and then anybody that comes to that web page is going to see the most current version of the information that we're creating, right? I mean, that's, the, that's kind of the reasonable division of labor between published documents and published pages on the web. But because of the nature of Google Docs, we can actually publish our regular documents as web pages. So you can actually send people a dynamic version of a document that you're working on. Allow me to show you that as well. In any document that you're working on, in Sheets, in, in the presentation, in Google Slides, and in uh, Google Docs, you can, under the File menu, choose Publish to the Web. If you choose to publish any document to the web, it makes a public link of that document, and which you can, you can revoke that access later. Uh, but once we've published it, we can then take this URL and instead of copying and pasting the text of a document into an email or sending it, exporting it and sending it as an attachment, we can actually send them to a web page which will have the latest version of the document that we're working on. How cool is that? You can use this for everything from creating online courses to instructions to FAQs to project management. There's so many different ways that you can take advantage of being able to instantly take one of your documents and publish it as a page to the web without creating your own website. We don't need our own website for this. We're just sending them this link. And when I make changes to the document, the next person that visits the page will see the changes to that document. I think that is a way cool and vastly underutilized feature that's built in to Google Drive. Now, the last thing that I'm going to show you is using Google Drive on this, on your smartphone. So just give me a second here and I'll connect my phone so I can show you the phone screens. And I have my iPhone connected now and this works in either, of course, Android or iPhone. Uh, just go to the App Store and in the App Store, you can find all of the different Google apps that are available. Now, you want to make sure that you're, buy, you're buying, that you're downloading the free Google version of these apps. So let me just show you how to make sure of that. If you go into, say, the Apple App Store, there's often uh, other people will create different tools for Google Drive and that sort of stuff. But if you type in Google Drive into the search engine, you can, as you look at any of the apps, don't just open or download 
the app, but instead tap on the title and check for the publisher and make sure that Google Inc. is the publisher for whatever of these apps that you download. Then you're getting the original Google one and you know you're in good shape and you're not getting some sort of a knockoff that's, that does some of the features but might do other things as well. So just make sure of that as you, as you download these different apps. And once you've downloaded them, you can download, and I have the most popular three downloaded right here into my phone. I have access to Google Slides, Google Sheets, and Google Drive and Google Docs. So there's four of them. Uh, but if I go into any of these, I can edit them and manage them from my smartphone. And even if you decide that you don't want to use Google Drive offline that I showed you at the very beginning, you can still make any of these available, any documents available to you on your smartphone so you can work on them when you're offline as well. You have that ability built in as well. But here we see access to all of my docs in the Google Docs, uh, in the Google Docs mobile app. Uh, so it's not the most ideal place for editing documents, but for, uh, for reviewing, for rehearsing, for preparing for a presentation, for that sort of stuff on your smartphone, this is a terrific way to be able to access your data on your phone in both an online and offline environment. And a lot of people never take advantage of the fact that they can manage all of their docs from their smartphone or tablet this easily. And that is five kind of, I think, cool things that you should be using with Google Docs that I'm not sure everybody is. So to recap quickly, our five super useful Google Drive tips. The first, using Google Drive offline on either your smartphone or your tablet or on your computer. We have the revision history, which allows you to go back in time and get an older version of a document and bring it forward. We have the automatic substitution that corrects common errors that we often make when we're typing. The ability to publish to the web, which I think once you get your head around, you will find is a really terrifically valuable feature. And finally, using Google Drive in a mobile environment, again, either in the offline or online world. Well, I hope you found today's video to be useful. Look forward to your comments in the comments below if you have any questions or comments. I don't have time to reply to each and every comment, but I guarantee you one thing, I do read each and every comment that you post. And if you found today's video to be useful, I have two favors to ask, two, only two. The first is please share this video with others. Let them know about the Dotto Tech channel if they don't know about it. And if you're not yet subscribed to this channel, please subscribe and make sure you ring that notification bell so that you're informed when we upload any new videos. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle. <laughs>